Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm going to be quickly showing you how to remove the radio, the factory fitted radio from a Hyundai Santa Fe. This is a 2008 model. And I'm also going to show you all these parts that you're going to need to be able to put a replacement aftermarket radio into the vehicle, a double dim one, so the bigger size radio. First up, we need a fascia kit. So this is like a plastic surround to make the radio fit in, the new radio fit in. We'll have a look at that out the bag shortly. This one's a Connects 2, or as you can see there, Sculch. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that one, but that's how I pronounce it. It's a CT24HY05. Check the Connects 2 website for that one. And as you can see, Santa Fe 07 onwards. We also have two different aerial connectors because these vehicles can have two different ones depending which yours is. And unfortunately, you won't know until you get the radio out. Depends on region the sold, spec they are, exact build year, etc. So it's always best to just order both, send the one back that you don't need. We have a CT27 AA39 and a CT27 AA40, depending which one you will need. Now I'm leaning towards this one on most of them, it's the most common one, but you never know. Also, we have a wiring harness adapter to convert the car's wiring from the normal radio into a universal din style wiring that will fit all aftermarket radios this again is made by connects 2 ct20 hy03 so all these are connects two parts you can all order them from their site or from a dealer that deals in them first things first let's get on with removing the actual radio you're going to be needing a plastic leverage tool so get yourself one of them from car shop or ebay amazon they're about a pound well worthwhile don't use a screwdriver guys you will put little dints in your plastic trim it'll look a bit of a mess so don't do it and all you're going to do is work your way along i'll take the flat one and we'll go with that one you can start either end whichever one's easier some of these plastic clips that hold these things in are very tough now what you would normally do is pop this above or below yeah so you can actually i'll just show you force it in and then pry and pop this particular one was tight on this end. But basically I started at this end, popping the leverage tool under here, pull, pull, pull all the way around. You see the plastic clips that it's on just here. Work your way along until it all comes away. You got a little plastic squeezy tab here for the cigarette lighter, just pinch that and pull and it'll come out. And what it leaves is all the holes from these clips that you've just pulled out. So there's your huge trim lock all the way around. From out of the way, we're gonna remove two screws one here underneath this vent and another one if you can see it's a bit dark but under this vent as well so the same screw on the corresponding side it's because the whole lot flips out eventually we've also got two more screws to remove in here i've already took them out there's one there and one there and then you can lift that out out of the way completely so they can see the fascia top so we're just going to take these two out and proceed once you've removed your other screws, you can get your finger underneath, sort of pop, the whole lot pops off, get all the way around it, like so. It can be tricky, guys, because you've got electrical connectors for the clock and all these buttons. Can you see them? So they're all on pinch tabs, the little white bit there. Sort of pinch and pull to remove it, pull all of them out, and then your whole lot, the whole assembly will pull forward. Here's a view with some of them disconnected. There's the clock one. There's pinch tab, push down, pull. Same with these two, and then one last one with a pinch tab underneath, pinch and pull. With that out of the way, you can now undo four screws. One here, one here, one here, and one there. Take all those out to proceed to remove the stereo. Now these radios are a big weighty thing and they're made of steel, so I highly recommend you put something padded underneath your heater. You don't want to scratch any of that. This is steel, this is paint, so not good. To get the radio out now, it's just a case of pinching the big tab here and pulling, and pulling your aerial connector out. And there's your radio completely removed. In fact, this one has actually even got a normal DIN aerial on it, so we're not going to even need an aerial adapter on this particular one. But I have seen them with the other connections, so check, you know, sort of first or order them and uh, send them back what you don't need so there's your adapter there's your aerial that's everything quick tip for you guys it might save you spending hours trying to research this if you get no sound from your aftermarket radio when it's in so here's the aftermarket radio with its frame and everything yeah midway through the installation if you get no sound but it powers up it's the amp cable now on this block there's a gray wire there yeah third from the end top row and you'll notice it doesn't have a wire coming out the corresponding side here it's just an empty bay lock 
yeah now this wire is actually the one that turns the amplifier underneath your seat on okay there it is look i've snipped it from there what you're going to need to do is put that gray wire ignore the orange it's just an extension so it sits nicely with the rest to the blue wire that comes out the back of your radio now the blue wire is normally to run things like electric aerials amplifiers things like that so you collect the blue wire from the back of your radio to the grey wire that goes into your vehicle. This is a UK model, by the way, so you know, just do check. And this is power feed to your amplifier. To, in other words, to tell the amplifier to switch on and make noise. Without doing this on some of these, it won't work. Okay, carry on. And when you're all done and dusted, guys, it should look something like this. Very smart, I'm sure you'll agree. Any questions on this installation, you're best to contact your retailer where you got the products from. But hopefully it was some help for somebody out there. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.